This is a video demonstrating a pedal board build that I did last year. The board is by Temple Audio. It's in their Trio series and it's the 28 inch model. There are some videos that I shot at the beginning of this process that unfortunately are no longer with us. These would be like the unboxing and me pointing out some of the features of the various Temple Audio accessories that I ordered. Now it bears mention that this was my first ever pedal board build. Prior to this, I had a trailer trash board, which was very nice, but the pedals were just Velcroed onto the top and the cables were not routed underneath the board, so it didn't look very tidy at all. Now, if you're an experienced builder, you might get a laugh out of some of the revelations that I had while putting this together. But hey, that's what we're all here for, right? to laugh and learn. So the pictures you're seeing are of the final product. And here's how we got there. So one thing I've learned right off the bat is that getting the uh, getting this panel to come out here, which is where the modules screw into, that was a little weird. So there's a bunch of screws underneath. You can, you can see little, little screws. And then you have to push them through. And man, I was pushing and pushing and this thing was not coming through. So, I mean, you can even see like right now, I really press with one hand like that, it's not working. The way I had to do it, I don't know if I can do it, I had to put the phone down and press really hard. So uh, just something to be aware of if you get one of these, you gotta really press hard to get those modules to come out. Super easy to get the modules in once you've got those panel plates out. They, uh, you can see they just kinda screw in, you can probably see it over there. Uh, two screws on each, or uh, one screw on each side, and it's in, and then it looks great from the outside. It is uh, flush with it, so this is on my right-hand side of the board in the middle slot, and uh, yeah, so that's where everything is gonna, is gonna plug in. It's coming together now. We've got the, uh, the High Five mod in here, the Clocks mod, and again, this is where the power's gonna come from. And it's got these great dip switches, so you can set it up exactly for what your uh, power requirements are. So, yep, looking good. All right. I'm now attempting to install the AC mod, which is what powers the uh, Clocks Hi-5 mod here. So when this is in, this cable is going to go here and power that unit. Okay, and that's what powers the pedals. The problem is, is that you've got to get, so there's the way it's mounted is we have this screw right here. Now, can you see it? If I go in here, probably can't even see it. The other mounting screw for this is stuck way down here in this side, over in here, on the other side here. I don't even know if you can see it. This is my screwdriver down here and it is next to impossible to get that in there. So that is my current challenge. I've been at about 20 minutes on this, trying to get this other screw in, and it's just not happening. So uh, I don't know what the solution is to it, because I think Temple Audio's got some, the way they put this all together, it's very well thought out, but uh, I don't know. This part has got me really flummoxed see what happens. So something that I have thoroughly goofed on is that I put the AC mod on the wrong side of the pedal board. I actually had these on opposing sides, the uh, 4, 4X mod pro and then the high five mod. And because uh, it wasn't real clear that the AC mod is what powers the high five mod. So Make sure you get them on the same side. So now I'm going to put this back. I'm going to put this up here where it belongs so that it will power the uh, High Five mod. So just a word to the wise because it doesn't really come with instructions. So go back to the website from where you ordered the products and familiarize yourself with what goes where. It also doesn't specifically stipulate that you're going to have to give up one of your pedal slots here in order to power the 4X mod. So, and it's not even really clear on the website. I'm just kind of deducing that from, uh, you know, how else am I going to get power into this? And uh, so I'm thinking that at some point there's going to be an extra high five mod over here because I'm pretty sure I'm going to run out of, uh, out of power. Okay, we're moving along here. 
I got the, uh, the light kit installed, the uh, RGB thing. Comes with a uh, little remote for changing colors. Pretty neat, huh? And there's like modes of flashing things and scenes and all this kind of stuff you can do. So, cooking along here. So I've just installed the IEC mini mod. So this is for, uh, depending on what kind of pedals you have, and I've got a Fractal AX8, anything that's got an IEC type plug, you need the IEC mini mod. So that is in here. And since I'm gonna have two things that have an IEC on it, I've got a splitter here that takes this single and puts it into two. So I'm gonna have one for the, uh, for the Fractal and another for my Leslie simulator, which is the uh, Neo ventilator. And that will be coming on here soon. Um, so, you know, one thing that's, I guess, a little bit of a pain is that I'm gonna need two sources of power. So I'm gonna have a cable here on this end for the IEC stuff. And then there's gonna be another cable here that's going to power the, uh, the temple mods here that are in here. So, you know, running two cables, That'll take a little bit of getting used to, but I'm hoping that the uh, the efficiency of all this uh, will be something that I'll uh, get accustomed to kind of quickly. So the other thing that I have done is I have attached the mounting plates for the fractal. So that took that was a little a little weird getting those on there um, or just measuring them to make sure that they were going to be in the right spot. But there's plenty of holes on here as you can see. It was recommended to me that I, uh, once I take the paper off of here, the adhesive uh, to to uh, kind of fortify that with a little bit of group of uh, gorilla tape. So I think I'm going to be doing that. And then next step is to uh, throw the fractal on here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it like that for a little bit. I'm going to use it for my gig tomorrow, and uh, then I'm going to put everything else on uh, a little bit later. So that's where we are. One of the big selling points for me about the Temple audio boards was the fact uh, that they have these modular mounting plates. So gone are the days of having to Velcro your pedals to the board and have them, you know, have them stuck in places that you, you know, at some point you might say, ah, geez, I don't want this here and you have to rearrange your board. That's all done away with, with these, because with these, we unscrew the back of this. I'll show you how it works here. And they mount, can you see that there? They mount onto the back so if you ever need to move your your pedal it's as easy as unscrewing this and moving the pedals because these will end up being attached to the underside of the pedal board i'm about to do this with my fractal as you can see here so there's going to be four there's four of these and uh, again it was advised that better to do four of the medium plates rather than uh, two of the larger ones. So I got a bunch of the medium plates and then I have some smaller ones over there that you can see that are gonna go on the back of some of my smaller pedals. All right, so the fractal is about to get mounted to the board. Okay, we're making good solid progress. We've got the, uh, I've got the uh, ventilator, Leslie simulator pedal on the board as well as my Shure Wireless and the uh, Fractal Volume and the Electro Harmonics B9 pedal. So now I'm gonna put the last pedal on, which is my Source Audio C4 synth pedal. And you know, these are these uh, mounting plates I was telling you about. And they're pretty uh, pretty snazzy, you know? I think they just, you, know, they, they sna you can snap them into place like that. And let's see, I think that one would be going there. And then you just make sure that it lines up with where your pedals are. And no, I need these to be over more. So I'm gonna go there and there. And yeah, so as you can see, the, uh, oops, when, uh, when this is in, so my access hole for the output is here, my access, port for the input is right there. So they do give you a nice amount of, uh, of options here as far as the holes go. And uh, yeah, 
So that's where we are. And then that's going to be it for the, the putting the pedals on. And then what's going to happen next is uh, wiring up everything underneath. Because I need to, uh, I got to start soldering cables. Fun, fun. Okay, so it's been probably three weeks since the last bit that I filmed on this. During that time, I came to the realization that I am not a solderer. I cannot solder. It did not work. I could not pass signal through any of the cables that I had made, even using these, this fine Magam, Magami wire and these uh, nice square plug plugs, jacks. So I took them to uh, my friend Ronnie Santmeyer, who's a wizard at this stuff, and he, I cut the cables, but he soldered everything together, and I now have everything all properly labeled, and I'm going to be putting it under the pedal board. Uh, in the last few weeks, I've just been using the board, kind of just going in direct <laughs> into, the, uh, into the fractal here and, and out without any of the switching or anything going on. So I'm looking forward to putting this together tonight and using it for the first time all properly wired at my gig tomorrow. So the next picture you see will be the wired pedal board. So there you have it, folks, my finished pedal board. If you're considering getting a Temple Audio board, don't let any of the frustration or confusion that I had dissuade you from getting one. I'll talk a little bit about the actual pedals I'm using. From looking at this board, you might be surprised to know that I'm actually a bass player because there is not one pedal on this board that was made specifically for bass guitar. The Fractal Audio AX8 is designed more for guitar players, but it does have bass guitar functionality in it and amp models and effects that work for bass. So that's primarily what I use it for is a bunch of different amp and cab simulators when I'm not using a full rig and I use it as just a giant effects pedal board when I'm just when I'm running straight in to my amp. The next biggest piece you'll see there immediately to the right of the fractal is the Neo Ventilator. This is a Leslie Simulator pedal that I use when I want to make my bass sound like a Hammond organ. I play a lot of basses that have octave strings like 8, 10, 12, and 15 string basses. And when I use the fractal with a little bit of distortion and run that into that Leslie Simulator, it really does sound like John Lord from D Deep Purple, like his left hand, is uh, playing bass. When I really want to amp it up even more, I have the uh, Electro Harmonix C9 pedal, which models a bunch of classic Hammond organ sounds. And then immediately to the left of that, I have the Source Audio C4 synth pedal. And next to the C9, I have the Mission pedal that doubles as an expression pedal or as a volume pedal. And I'm going to be redoing the pedal board pretty soon because I think I'm going to need a second pedal so that I can have a dedicated volume and dedicated expression pedal. And then next to that is just my Shure wireless unit. So not a lot of things that you would see on the typical bass player's pedal board, but it works for me and that's what it's all about. And if you're about to start a pedal board build of your own, I highly recommend the Temple Audio products. The stuff is built like a tank and the modular design makes it very easy to get things laid out exactly the way you want them. And thankfully I had access to two pedal board wizards, the first being guitarist Marco Riva, who plays in one of my bands. He was the guy who turned me on to Temple Audio, and he was invaluable during this process. And the second being Ronnie Santmeyer, who is an electronics wizard. And uh, without those two, I don't think I would have this board. So I hope it was helpful, and thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.